Enough about the Ganon cannon that is TBL Nomad. Let's continue on in this winner's bracket. P2P with Gibbous versus FX's own Dakpo. Now, Gibbous, he was the defender of Dallas last yeah. week. You know, he was able to go and take first place at Shockwave. But one of the opponents he did not run into, who was actually not present last week, the man sitting next to him right now, Dakpo, back in the hot seat, hoping to go ahead and take a Shockwave of his own as we go into game number one on Town & City. Okay, so when it comes to these two characters' interaction, I feel that they both are really strong options for getting in. And actually, okay, so I was talking to uh, Gibbous earlier, and um, he, right in front of Dakpo, um, talked about a way to get out of um, Zero Two Samus's combos, uh, out of grab, out of anything. And it's um, using this, um, the side sneak. special. Yeah, Shadow Sneak. Yeah, that Shadow Sneak is so good at escaping some of those multi-hit moves. And you expect Gibbous to do that quite a bit. You, know, you saw him get out of that forward air. Now he's back on stage, putting on some nice pressure, forcing Dakpo off. And that's really important, too. I think a ZSS with stage control is insanely scary. Yeah. When there's really nowhere left to run, those chances of getting grabbed or even getting stun gunned increase exponentially. So really important for Gibbous here. To avoid that grab attempt there, putting on some nice percentage. His Dakpo's at that 64%. Ooh. Yeah, a little let's cancel right there. Yeah, let's cancel. I, I like it. I like it. The game is definitely the underdog here in, in my eyes. That's why we already see that additional one on Dagpo, even though it shouldn't be there, uh, as far <laughs> as the count goes. Yeah. See, what's what's really going to matter um, for Gibbous is if he's able to bait out those grabs, which he's done a great job of so far, and then punish them accordingly, uh, since Zero Sweet Samus has become so vulnerable after missing a grab. True. They're a great combo starter option, but if you whiff, you are so susceptible to getting comboed yourself. Exactly, and then Reninja having a phenomenal grab, uh, being slightly disjointed. Uh, oh, and that is definitely not what you want to do against Reninja, jumping right into the tipper of that up smash. Uh, now, Gibbous with the lead in a really advantageous position. Oh, and he's able to just snap barely out before Dak was able to find the punish, but there's that boost kick and there's the stock. Dead even game, game number one. Looking really crisp. Yeah, exactly. What what Jack was going to need to do is just remember how he lost that first stock and watch out uh, being above uh, Gibbous' Greninja. So let's talk about it. You know, we, we have this graphical error, obviously, on stream where Dakpo's already given game one. Yeah. But but regardless of this, you know, the way that Gibbous is playing right now, how do you feel that, that kind of stacks up in regards to uh, the, the potential predicted outcome? Uh, the way Gibbous is playing and the way Gibbous has been playing the last few weeks, uh, he's definitely not that new up-and-comer anymore. He's definitely kind of grown into his own as one of the top players of this area. And it wouldn't be hard to say that Gibbous is going to come out on top tonight like he did last week uh, against, you know, a tough player like Dakpo who's really, really good at playing Zero Suit Samus, using Zero Suit Samus to the uh, utmost abilities uh, that she has. Uh, Gibbous is playing very well so far. I have the deficit right now, though. Um, he's going to need to find a way to get back in the zone, which he's doing a great job of right now. Uh, has stays control. Ooh, and that shuriken's going to give him even more of that, continuing to go ahead and pester Dakpo. But make it back, though, with that whip. There's a huge paralyzed, but he this time barely whiffs on the uh, on the downbeat punish. Yes. He was trying to equate for that drift that we saw the last time he had a, he had a down smash set up. But he overshot it this time, unfortunately, in contrast to undershooting it previously. Yeah. Now, both players put themselves in a very dangerous position. Oh. That's tough. Oh, That's tough. God. That was that was tackable. That's oh. tough. You have to be so precise when it comes to taking that. Too precise. Yeah, because you're, you're, you're stuck in stun. And then you get hit by the back air. So you're just like, the timing for that tech was so precise that it was just you would have to have like ridiculous frame perfect timing to get that. If, if Gibbous had hit that tech, I'd take him to uh, like um, like main event or Chuck E. Cheese or something. Right. The game wherever like it's the light up and it goes around the ring and if oh. it's at one point you get the jackpot. Yeah. I'd be like, all right, Gibbous, <laughs> give me some tickets, man. Right? I, I need some army men. Right? I need some army men, some parachute dudes. <laughs> Have you seen this stuff you can win at those things now? You, Dude, can, you can get like a PlayStation, you can know, get man. a guitar, like. But like even if you hit the jackpot every single time, it would be more cost effective to just buy the PlayStation. Honestly, yeah. Unless can. it's like that one game where it pushes the points. That's that game where you make money, dude. That's the money game right there. I actually never played that one. Dude, if you if you can get on get just right on that, 
I've seen this one couple of Dave and Buster's just like they they were like you know like you know like whenever you go to like casinos and you'll see like the old people like just putting in coins in the slot machines. Yep. They were like that, except they just like had so many tickets to the point where a dude had to show up and refill the ticket. Are you serious? Yeah, dude, it was it was nuts. That's incredible. It was nuts. But enough about tickets uh, and, and playing games. Game number two actually on Omega Gamer here. This is uh, give us his go-to yeah, counter pick. Yeah, this is his favorite stage. Regular gamer and Omega Gamer. Uh, he just loves the stage. No mom assist, though it doesn't look like Gibbous is really going to be needing them. Again, we see Gibbous off to a pretty solid start in stock one. But the one thing that makes Dak post such a formidable threat in our area is how good he is at downloading the opponent. So stock one may be in Gibbous' favor, but as we saw, a complete turnaround in stock number two might be Gibbous' worst nightmare. Exactly. And, uh, you know... Going, kind of going off of that, Dakmo being a character that adapts and is really strong, also has the aid of a really a character who's really good at sealing the stocks, but not as good as Greninja. Right there, <laughs> double jab, left him there, and hit him with the forward smash. Uh, once again, give us in the lead in a really good position. But with a character like Zero Speed Samus, you cannot count Dakmo out just yet. Being able to seal stocks incredibly early, regardless of her percents or the uh, her uh, opponent's percents. And this might be an opportunity, but Gibbous able to shadow sneak out of the boost kick. Wow. We talked about how potent that can be when it comes to dealing with those multi-hitting moves. Exactly. And Gibbous might have found the counter to one of Dakmo's trump cards here. So let's see if uh, Dakmo is even going to be able to seal off the stock. Uh, up B looking kind of, uh, kind of shady right now. Ooh, but that time it's going to be just enough. Okay, so you see what happened there is he, he actually got the Shadow Sneak out, but it didn't move him any distance um, away. Oh, wow. he, got, he got the poop, but he didn't get away. So I, there could be some kind of percent of where it works or like some kind of angle that he was at before that allowed him to get out of it. In a, in a precarious position as the percents are tied. Both folks roughly the same amount of stage control as we get just past the 330 mark. Dakmo's aerial, aerial game, I feel, is a lot better overall in this game than it was in the previous games. Yeah. Because we noticed, actually, in the first stock of that last game, Gibbous got Dakmo to commit to a jump, probably trying to go for an option like a nair. Gibbous was able to punish with one of those up smashes. But, again, a repeat of stock two, Dakmo is trying to find his footing, and Gibbous is starting to lose a lot more stage control. Those jabs are only going to help his case, though. Yeah, so this is very similar to how the first game went. Get out of it that time. This is very similar to how the first game went. Uh, Dakpo, you know, in a lead on the on stock two, and then Gibbous coming back from the deficit. Somehow, right now, 61% on Dakpo, 125 on Gibbous. A very bad situation for Gibbous to be in, but he's definitely not one to count out just yet. Before we saw what was uh, jabbed into the F smash. Yes. I wouldn't be surprised if you see something like that. Surprise down here. Yeah. That surprised everybody. That surprised me. So 140%. Dakmo's going to want to take this stock out soon. Any smash attack right now should kill him. I'm looking for aerials. I wouldn't be surprised if Dakmo starts going for bears. But there's the up smash. And Gibbous able to claw back from the depths of defeat and yeah. take game two on his favorite stage. So you know what that was. That was uh, that was the, the first stock. That uh, was the first one. stock. Once again, Dakmo jumping into the tipper uh, hitbox of that up smash on Greninja. Well, put yourself in Dakmo's shoes for a second, right? Boost kick not working out as consistently, even less consistently than before. Yeah. You're trying to start to look for those single hit moves that really pack a punch. Yeah. Talking about options like those forward airs, those back airs. That's what's going through Dakpo's mind. But that's exactly the opening Gibbous needed in the first stock, and that's exactly the opening Gibbous needed in the last stock in game number two. Game three underway. We're going to Battlefield, and Gibbous is making a character switch now. He doesn't have that same escape option out of the boost kick, which means that Dakpo might actually be able to execute some of those combos a bit more pristine. Yeah. We got some double music going on. Uh, we're going to fix that in a second. We, we put on the music from, uh, oh, from Xenoblade because... Uh, on the normal default gamer stage, there isn't um, a music option. I think. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's it's just silence. Ah, okay. That, that's why you play the music in the background. But now we gotta kind of switch the music up so we can make it so that we can actually hear the beautiful battle yeah. music. Yes, exactly. Even though Gower Plains is amazing. Oh, it is amazing. So, so right now, uh, both characters at a fairly even percent, 73, 87, fairly uh, that much uh, separating the two. 
Uh, the one scary part for Zakpo in the situation, though, is Lucario's aura stacking up with that rage. Oh, just what I was about to talk about, how the one area where Zakpo has suffered in this set is closing out those stocks. He comes out huge with that downbeat. Yes. Fantastic play. And that's what you need against Lucario. You need to take the first stock. That's how you dictate the pace of a Lucario match. If you're able to take off that first stock, taking out one of his biggest tools early is that rage, then you are setting yourself up for success in a really good position. It's going to be a lot harder for Gibbons to get some of those wins in neutral. It was, it was hard enough going against Dak, but who really suffered on the punish game. But now he has a good with maybe a lot more knockback on a lot of his moves, sure, but not that same sort of range, range that he really needs. Yeah. So uh, uh, Gibbous right there missing a very crucial punish, going for the up air instead of the forward smash. That is definitely going to hurt him as Dakbo racks up even more percentile on an already staggering lead, almost lapping Gibbous in percent. He was trying to look for that back air, but Dakbo's jab's coming out way too quick. It's a side beat. <laughs> if this was Brawl, I think that might have been a nice KO option, but that's right. definitely not as potent as it once was. Uh, so, uh, actually, a quick side note about the Aura Spear. The recent pass getting nerfs to where that, um, the lock, the shield lock that it used to have, uh, doesn't work anymore. So, Gibbous losing one of his uh, very crucial kill options. And Dakpo, his offstage presence? Yeah. Oh, man. He really brought out that last set. He was able to steal kills that last set. That's that's what was different from every other game in that set. Dakpo was able to steal stocks when he wanted to. Dakpo, man. <laughs> it's just Dakpo, man. It's just Dakpo. He does things, dude.